C-Line is a fully featured cross-platform IDE for C and C++, as well as other languages via plugins. When you first create a new project in C-Line, you'll get a typical Hello World stub application you can start from, and a cmakelist.txt file already created for you and ready to go. Now let's imagine we want to build a game involving monsters. We might start with a monster class. Now as it is C++, even an empty class involves a lot of boilerplate, but C-Line generates all of that for us, including the header guards, although you can configure it to use Pragma once instead. So let's add some data members. First, a couple of ints. Now a string. And C-Line tells us there's a problem because we haven't added the include for it. Well, we don't need to break our flow here. We can just alt enter and C-Line will fix it straight away. And we can just carry on. But now, if we want a constructor, we have a lot of boilerplate again. So C-Line has a range of generators. To let us skip all of that, let's generate a constructor. We can choose which, if any, fields to initialize. Let's select these two. And there. It's even put the implementation in the CPP file for us. Although we could have chosen in line. Now as an aside, notice that size and name here have different colors. That's because we're using a feature of C-Line called semantic highlighting, which gives each local variable its own color so that you can visually trace the flow of data through your code. Now back to monster, what else can we generate? Well, we can generate destructors and getters and setters individually or as a pair. So let's do that again for size and name. And now let's add an equality operator. Now note we get the choice to implement using standard tie. Let's see what that looks like. This time we'll do it in line. So just because this code is generated doesn't mean it shouldn't look nice and be easy to read and maintain. Note we also got a not equals operator as well. Let's try the relational operators. Notice how they're all implemented in terms of less than. We can even generate class members from the CPP file. Let's give it a streaming operator overload. So our monster class has a lot of code written for it now that we haven't had to write. But now we want different types of monsters. Let's make it into a hierarchy. First, let's add a zombie class. And uh, we make it derived from monster. Notice the include is automatically added for us. But we've got this red line here telling us something's wrong and hovering over tells us that the base class doesn't have a default constructor. Now if we try to fix this with alt enter here, we get two options. Either add the default constructor to the base class or add a matching constructor in the zombie class. So let's do that. So let's go back to monster and add a pure virtual. And in zombie, we can implement that again by generating a stub. Now power is not accessible, so we can alt enter to fix that and make it protected in monster without leaving zombie. And to make it more interesting, let's add an ogre too. Note how quickly we put together a whole derived class with forwarding constructor and implementing that virtual. Now we have a hierarchy, let's see how we can navigate around it. Now if we go to the type name, we can control H to bring up a type hierarchy view. And we're looking at subtypes here, but we can switch to super types. And there we see monster, we can go to that. And we can bring up monsters hierarchy and see all its subtypes. Now this is just a small hierarchy, but as it grows and is spread around a larger code base, this becomes a really useful way to not only navigate the code, but also discover what type relationships exist. So now let's use our new classes. Over in main, we'll declare a zombie. Again, the header is added for us. And we can see what the arguments need to be. So we'll give it a size and a name. And now if we want to ask for the name, you can see that we get the usual dropdown of all completions, but most of these are not appropriate because we know that we want a string. And this is where we can use smart completions. This will limit the list to just those that match the types, or in this case, because there was only one match, it goes straight to that. Of course, we can set the name too with the setter we added. But if we wanted set name to return the name that we're changing from, well, now the types don't match because set name returns void, of course. But if we alt enter here, we get the option to change the return type to match. And now we've still got to go to the implementation to make it actually return that string. Okay, so a bit later, we find ourselves implementing a fight method here on the zombie class. And when we fight, we'll lose power proportional to our size. 
but we also want to gain points proportional to our size. So we've added a score field to our base class, so let's increment that by the same amount. Now we have some redundancy in our code. We can deal with that if we highlight the expression and then use the extract variable refactoring to introduce a new variable to hold the result and give our variable a name and we can even choose to make it auto or make it const. Let's do both of those. But we might want to use that value elsewhere. So let's highlight it again and use extract method this time. A new method is added and fully implemented. We can also go the other way. We can inline our method call and inline our variable and that puts us back to where we started. But I prefer the extracted variable version, so we'll go back to that. And now we use keyboard shortcuts here, but all of the refactorings are available from the refactoring context menu. But of course, we can't fight if we're out of power. So we'll need to make this whole block of code conditional. And for this, we can use a surround with template. We've got a lot of choices here. We can use loops and if defs, but we just want a simple if statement. You can also create your own live templates, either as a new block or as a surrounds with style over a selection. For example, here's one I defined for pushing a block of code into an immediately invoked Lambda expression. And finally, with our zombie class, maybe we want to ask it to make a noise. So let's call a make noise method. But we haven't written make noise yet, so it's colored red. Alt enter helps us again. We can automatically add the missing method and implement it. So let's run our app now, see what the output is, which we can see in the console output tool window. And we can also set a breakpoint and debug into the code. We can see our current variables in the debugger window down here. We can look up the call stack. Notice that we also see current debugger values displayed in line with the code, which can give you much more context to work with. Of course, there are many more debugging and breakpoint options than we can cover here. And we can also attach the debugger to a running process, as well as remote debug onto another machine or virtual machine. And after all these changes, we can go back and review each step by browsing the local history. This is like version control without explicit version control. Of course, we also have full version control built in, with support for Git, Mercurial, Subversion, and even CVS. Let's use this functionality to clone my test framework, Catch, straight from GitHub. And now we can browse the commit log, push, pull, and commit changes. CLine has unit test support built in too, including support for Google Test and Catch. We can specify test cases or tags to use with auto-completion, or we can provide a pattern with wildcards. But by default, all non-hidden tests are run, so let's do that. Now let's add a failure, say here. And now we can click to see the failure message. Notice it tells us where the failure occurs, which we can click on, what the original expression was, and what the values break down to in this case. So now let's fix that again, and we can rerun just the failing tests. We can also run just the test that the cursor is currently in. Or we can run all tests in the current source file. Now the catch project contains its own documentation as markdown files, and CLine also understands markdown and shows live previews. It also contains a number of Python scripts to help with releases, and CLine comes bundled with a Python plugin too, so it can syntax highlight, offer completions, and even debug Python as well. We even get the same inline debugger variables. So that's just a few of the many features that CLine provides to help make you more productive in C and C++.